All right, my last few videos, the filming was very poor. So I've adjusted to the best of my ability, changed the angle, and uh, let's get started again. This is the Serpent SRX-8 Shruggy. Bought it through DeSoto Racing out there in Florida. Shipping uh, was pretty quick. Only took three or four days, I believe, uh, business days. So I'm gonna open it up, go through it. Nothing too detailed, just uh, show you what's in it. I'll probably make another video showing all the spares I got. Um, this is for my whole season, 2021. I'm going to try and do four or five races, so I wanted to buy everything at one time and not uh, pay lots of shipping. So this is the box. It's just like all the other boxes. It's, uh, it's got a sleeve over the box, which is this box is filled up. So you can see the, the bottom of it's all bowed out, so we'll see what's what's in it so start off kind of get this out of the way the here's a regular chassis see its color it's a little bit more gray and over here we have the, the hard-coated chassis this looks like the standard color you know standard aluminum on almost all other brands TLR, Kyosho, Associated, everybody. So this is the direct side-by-side, -side. as you can see back here on the, even on the SRX-8 buggy and any of them that use this, Serpent products that use the hard-coated chassis, they have inserts in here. They have a carbon fiber and some brass inserts so that you can replace just this section. So on truggies and buggies, this area wears out a lot as well as right here around the kick up so um i got this this chassis mostly for the rigid rigidity part of it um side by side uh you know i can't tell i don't have a, anything with me but i don't have the braces in them either so you can't tell how hard they are so those are the two chassis side by side so i'll build it with build the kit using this chassis so Fuel tank, so here is what came in the kit, and then here is the one that I purchased separately, so 601-131. Um, as you can see, it looks like the uh, yeah, for both of them, you'll need to install this guy so that you can be war legal and FMAR legal. It just essentially takes up some volume in the tank so that you're not running a, uh, a large tank. Now, it depends on what your rules are. Some organizations may may not care, but here in the United States, yeah, see it's, see it's not installed in there. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but the clunk, yeah, so clunk's in there, but you do need to um, install this. It takes up some volume in the tank, reduces your fuel tank capacity, um, just something so you can control racing, so. And that's the same thing as in this this kit. So get that back in the bag. We'll lose some of these parts. It's got the grommets with it, standoff posts, clips. Um, I do like this a a handle. Um, some kits they use zip ties doubled up. Um, you like secure the zip tie to the tank handle or to the tank lid and then another zip tie around that. Um, I like this. A lot of aftermarket uh, products that have tank pulls like that and the fact that the Serpent comes with it, I, I like that. So, looks like air cleaner and some fuel tubing, body clips, uh rear shims intake boot filter assembly um the wing mount that goes through the rear posts so it's a horizontal part looks like we got the radio tray with uh looks like that little graphite sticker 
I actually need to get this apart so I can go size a battery. I have not purchased a receiver battery yet. I wanted to see what would fit. Um, so you have the transponder covers, servo horns, servo shims, so you can properly space it. General tray. Looks like the linkages for the throttle and brake are in here as well. Yeah, they are. So that is the bag 12. Let's see here, bag 11, some side rails. So what I learned from my last kit that I built was that you uh, and don't install the left rail yet uh, if you're braking in an engine on your kit because the engine, um, when it's new, it just leaks oil and fuel or, or it runs real rich. So then your tray just fills up with, uh, with fuel. So it looks like these side guards have a little cutout right here for putting Velcro on it. So you put, uh, put a piece of Velcro here and a piece on the flap on the side of the body. Looks like a shock kit. I can't tell if these are fronts or rears, but comes with non-bleeder caps. So just regular old caps. So I have to learn how to how to build an emulsion shock with non-bleeder caps, but no biggie. Standoff, shock shafts. Um, I usually run my shocks uh, piston-wise straight out of the kit. Oh, so it does come with O-rings. So it looks like it has bladders in here and uh, cap O-rings. So I'm not sure which ones, if you use both of them or not. I usually don't, but I didn't think that it came with O-rings for running emulsion style. So that is one set of, so based on the shock body size. So one could be fronts. So it looks like these ones are the fronts. Bag 13 and bag 14 is the rears. And they come with springs. Springs are a little uh, dusty, little, looks like they may have uh, got a little bit of rust on them or something. Take a look at that. Um, clutch. Uh, so we got a flywheel here, clutch nut, exhaust hanger, some bearings, the pins for the for the flywheel. Same thing. I'll have to go through that and learn if whether or not you're supposed to lock tight when it goes in or not. I've, I've, I haven't built a four shoe clutch setup. Uh, engine mounts. Uh, in one of my other boxes, I have the one piece mount. So I'll, when I get that out, I'll I'll throw that in there. Looks like we have. Some more arms. Can't tell if these are fronts or rears. These looks like they're gonna be rears with pills. Um, looks like you got one of the hangers. That looks like a D hanger. Hinge pins, pivot balls for the sway bar. There's a sway bar in there. It's a 2.5. That is bag three. Bag one. Looks like this is some brake shoes. Brake discs, the center diff holder, um, screws and hardware, and that's bag one. Bag seven, these might be front arms. Hinge pins, bearings, sway bar, pills. Uh, looks like we have another could be a B-block, maybe. Uh, arm inserts. I did not get the carbon ones. I'm gonna drive it, so didn't put the in, didn't get the inserts. And the uh, the carbon fiber inserts. As much as I love some carbon fiber, I had to not buy it. So front bumper, turnbuckles, uh, another front mount. That's probably the front front mount. Um, steering posts. Looks like some shock ball mounts this is probably the front drive shaft it looks like um, it's a dog bone style that's bag nine bag eight you've got some hexes some axles this looks like the the front end assembly at yeah. hubs spindles bearings shims cvd parts Bag four, looks like rear axles. Uh, rear axles, axle shafts, looks like hub inserts, 
or the hub uh, spacers, bearings. It's like a large outer bearing and a slightly smaller inner bearing. Um, looks like hinge pins. That's bag four. Bag two. Looks like a rear rear shock tower aluminum CVD or a um, uh, yeah, coupler for the rear drive shaft, pinion gear, maybe a C block hanger. Let's see here. Yeah, it looks like a C, C block hanger because it has this little indexing insert. A front and rear diff assembly. So I'll build it. Um, I've got some greases that I use uh, right here where the drive cups go into the diff. Uh, I'm gonna build the oil wise, it'll be straight out of the box. Uh, straight straight kit setup, center diff. Then looks like I'll have to clean all these parts. So I always clean all the screws, clean everything, get all the machine oil off of them. Um, any dust or corrosion that might've settled during shipping. Looks like we have a rear shock tower, rear drive shaft, rear body mounts, or not shock tower, sorry, uh, wing mount. Some more, looks like we have turnbuckle clipped or uh, ball cups. I don't, I can't remember if these are captured style. They might not be. And yeah, 